everybody. Q&A time. Morning, Miss Tammy. Where are we headed? We are headed to go check out our new RV. We are, aren't we? It's exciting, isn't it? Yep. Okay, when Salacio Gonzalez says stud fee info. So on the very beginning of these videos, there's an 806 number, which is Cody's number. You can give Cody a call anytime, and he can tell you all about the studs. Uh, and uh, if that doesn't work, you can always contact me and I'll send you a link with uh, all the videos and pricing information and all that stuff. Um, Trent M says, can't wait for, the, for, for Kit's info video. Yeah, I'll probably put that video up tomorrow of them playing. Actually, two dogs that we have bred, one being Kit and the other one being uh, Kiki, who gets actually bred tomorrow morning. Some Trey Hamilton says, I have some pigs saved of fluffies from the early 1900s. Oh, that's interesting. What? Uh, fluffies. Pictures of fluffies from the 1900s. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they showed that on Facebook, too. Oh, yeah? Didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, that's been around a long time. Just been kind of just simmering in the background, hasn't it? Just Jew says, uh, you, you saw my dog about the uh, lilac and chocolates and red eye glow. My chocolate and tan doesn't have red eye glow. Mama's Mars form, Dad was an Isabella and tan. Please help. Well, something's wrong because a chocolate dog with this little b, little b, or little c, or little c, will have a red eye glow. And Merle's have a red eye glow. Yeah, so, yeah, but, so if your dog doesn't have a red eye glow and they say it's a chocolate, something's wrong. Um, probably the test is wrong, if I was guessing. So I'd, I'd go back and ask some questions here because it should have a red eye glow. In my, I, I've never ever, have you ever seen a dog, Tammy, that was chocolate or light and didn't have red eye glow? Right. Yeah, exactly, right. Um, DC Fourbang is talking about um, morals and the number that you get back. Uh, and he's saying 268 is a harlequin moral, not a cryptic, right? So cryptic morals are morals that don't show the moral at all, but they come back and test with a low number. He's saying he thinks it's below 250. And that could well be. But if you've got a dog um, that has been produced, so the problem with this is if you've got a dog that came from a moral from a moral parent and it's not moral, there is a possibility that it could be cryptic. Uh, I'm not sure how critical this is. I mean the, the issue here is you don't breed morals to morals because you can get deaf and blind dogs. But if you breed a cryptic moral to a cryptic, from what I understand, you only get a 4 per chance chance of that being an issue, so it's fairly slight. So, um, not sure how critical it is. Anyway, there we go. And I think you've got to go to the right place. I don't think that uh, animal genetics just tells you whether they're moral or not, versus places like UC Davis give you the number, and give you an idea about how much moral there is there. Hollywood Gold Frenchies. Thank you all. Did my research with you and others finally got my gener generation paperwork back from the AKC and what do you know love my sterling is in my stud pedigree your hard work goes full circle I love sterling of course um, you know it's uh, the, the sad thing about this is is that sterling's not being used anymore it's too old but uh, he produced a lot of really nice puppies over many many years so I'm guessing that you if he's got well sterling produced more puppies so of course it depends how far back in generation Sterling as to how much genetics you get, but yeah. Someone's saying that the two of us are non-stop comedy. Oh. It's not non-stop comedy, it's 95% comedy and 5% fighting like hell, right? Yeah. <laughs> like Lord my Lucy. <laughs> yeah. Lucy, I'm hey, home. I'm home. <laughs> Lucy, don't hit me. Juan Delegado says, I was talking about what we feed puppies, he says, I'm glad you taste, the, you taste the food because I do the same thing with my dogs. Yeah. yeah, nice to know what your dogs are eating. James grosses my grandkids out every time he does that. Well, we play a game with treats. You both are in the kitchen and about 10 for the part and you get to throw a treat and the other person has to open their mouth. If it lands in their mouth, they have to eat it and then they get a go at throwing a treat back at you. So I've eaten my fair share of treats that way. The, the grandkids normally welch out on it and they throw it in their mouth and they spit it out so they're cheaters, but hey, there we go. 
I mean, I'm, the, I'm also the camp that if it falls on the floor, I'm still eating it. And it, the hell with the five second rule. If it doesn't have flies on it, I'm probably gonna eat it. I think I think a little bit of... Uh, I wish there would be a big old dog turd on the ground that would match whatever you dropped on the floor and you pick up the wrong thing and eat it. I would laugh so hard. I'd probably pee my pants. I'd laugh so hard. Well, I have, I have, I have. <laughs> there was a time that Sammy or I were out in a club, and there was a beer that I thought was mine in front oh, of me, uh, and it was somebody's spittoon. It was not a can. It, it was wasn't. It was a bottle. bottle. And they're using it to spit their tobacco juice in it, and I took a big old swig of it, and uh, I choked it down. Choked it down. Yeah. It wasn't nice. It wasn't, I didn't like it. Sam, enough of that. Sam, right you says, I own two Frenches and I take them out in the Vegas heat at the park with intense playing. What I do to overcome the heat is wear the, give them a cooling vest and lots of cold water. Absolutely. You are a prepared person. Your doggies are having fun and you're keeping them safe. Hats you, off to you. You might carry around a little bottle of alcohol, rubbing alcohol to throw under their little armpits too. So alcohol evaps very quickly and because of that it's a great cooling method. Mm. So uh, it's not something that you're going to, you know, And throw... you might carry some lemon juice in, in your pack, a little bottle of little Squirt that in the mouth? Yep. Okay. Yep. That opens things up, does it? it? Yeah, it uh, okay. sure does. It... So I wonder where he's getting the cooling vest from. I'm sure they're available in a place like Chewy or somewhere like that. Yeah. I'm it's guessing that it's a vest that you put in the uh, refrigerator. It's a gel pack, I'm guessing. That's a good idea because... I mean, this is the problem with Frenchies, is that they, they absolutely can overheat. Oh yeah, big uh, time. And, and the thing about this, if you're in a situation where your dog has overheated and you don't have the necessary stuff, go get yourself a water hose. And the right way to do this is you start off by cooling their feet and their belly off. You don't just throw it over them because you... If with, you've got an ice machine, you can chunk ice all over the ground and keep it around them too. Yeah, but the best thing to do is to get them wet and get evaporation if you've got yeah. a dog in trouble. We had a, somebody come visit us one time. Mm -hmm. The dog that did get in trouble after a breeding, and uh, we soaked that dog. I mean, the dog was in trouble, but we soaked the dog down. It and was very... the female, not the male. Yeah, right. Yeah. Very quickly, the female yeah. recovered from it, and she had a good yeah. litter of puppies too. Good. But uh, yeah. She did okay. Or we were worried though. We thought she was going to lose it all. Uh, Kate Shiba Inu says, "Just a shout out. Got two or two heat strips, and they seem to work fine. I'm slightly confused though." My Sheba pups will only lay their heads on the heat strip area, not the whole body. Any ideas as to why? Yes, they're probably a little bit warmer than they need to be. So they will regulate their temperature by getting half on half. It's like you in bed where you stick a leg out of the bed. You stick a leg out because you get a little too hot, so you get a little kind of cooling going on by sticking a leg out. They're doing the same thing. They, they're, so people get worried about it being too hot. And the answer is the puppies will move to the place. They're not going to stay in an area where they get too hot. They will move. They will move. They'll move just, yeah. to just the temperature. So it's just fine. They're smart. Even little Mitty, they're smart. We all think our Frenchies are super smart. And they are. So Lisa Rosa, she's got a long thing here. I'm not going to read all of it. She says, I just love knowledge and learning about endocrine hormones. I love seeing cells from warm-blooded mammals under the microscope. I love studying diseases. Thank you for your knowledge. Adopt and, uh, adopt and rescue puppies. So I agree with you 100%. I love science too. It's just it's just incredible the way all this works. And, and uh, it, the more that you learn about it, the more that you realize how, how little you know about it. It's just, uh, it's such a fantastic process that uh, evolution has gone through to get us where we are today. Hi James, Tammy, I have a litter of Frenchies who are four weeks old today and I'm curious as to what do you worm you recommend for them. I use Panicure for Mama and I know you've mentioned this as well on one of your videos and I can't seem to find it, lol. Nemex too, you need to start that at two weeks old and every two weeks after that. Until right. they're six weeks old, then worm them with uh, Safeguard. Right. At six weeks. Right. So the but first started at two weeks with the Nemax two. So every two weeks do a, a worming, starting from when they're born. So not nothing when they're born, but two weeks start the worming. 
then you can either get Nemex 2 or you can get Parental Payamate, which is the same thing as a hell of a lot less expensive. You can buy that on Amazon. A big bottle of that's, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. A small bottle of Nemex is 100 bucks. So, uh, can't say it now. Palomate, uh, Parental Payamate is the same thing. And then the safeguard is a, is a goat wormer, so it's fender bender solid, it's extremely safe. You do use that for three at, days. At six weeks old. At six weeks old, exactly. So six weeks old, you start that. You don't use that earlier because it, it is a little bit stronger. So it's recommended for six weeks, puppies or older. And it, and it covers a plethora of different things. So when our six weeks puppies, when they're six weeks, we just give it to them one time. Uh, three days. Huh? Three days. Okay. Yep. Nemax one day. Yes. But the... Safeguards three days. Yes, or we just give it to him one time. No, you're. Tammy's right. getting. Tammy's mind's going. Tammy, what's your middle name? That's what I thought. It's the beginning of the end. Docks and ducks. I'm not a breeder, but I have two French and decide to breed them. Well, you're fixing to become a breeder. He's <laughs> a hobby breeder. They are now six weeks old and I can't sell them. Oh, my wife and I don't do social media at all and Craigslist just keeps taking down our ads. We created friends, but there are no one's supposed to any How do you how do you sell these beautiful puppies? We only have one female, which is made blah 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 blah. Get on Facebook and sell it. There you go. So Tammy, you I don't do this, Tammy does this. Whatever your state is, I promise you it will have Frenchie site there, like if you live in Alabama, Alabama Frenchies, it'll be on Facebook. Just look it up. So Craigslist, we don't use Craigslist. You know, if you breed a dog and you have babies, okay. You, so yeah, so Craigslist can, is a little bit tricky. No, I, don't do. do I've never. Let me That's finish. That's where scammers are. Uh, okay. So. Craigslist is a little bit funny because they do take things down and I've, I've sold cars and motorbikes on Craigslist and I did have to learn how to use the right wording so it didn't get shut down and I can't help you on that because I've never done one for a puppy. So Craigslist, you know, it's not really the best of vehicles for puppies in our opinion. One of the things you've got to watch out for is, you know, people showing up at, at your house and putting a gun in your face. So be a little careful about that. Don't put your dress no. on there. You know, no, so, so I wouldn't be a, use it at all. So be a little bit careful about that. So Puppy Find is another place to go. AKC lets you, um, with for a fee, after your dog's registered, you can put puppies on AKC, AKC site. I've had customers have a good success with that, never used that either. I think the biggest thing that I can recommend to anybody is take videos, put them on YouTube. And the reason for that is, is that when you put them on YouTube, other people see them, which is great. And the other thing is, is it gives you a link and that video, you can then give that link to a customer. You don't have to send them a long video that they have held downloading. You just send them a link, and then they download it, and then they go view it on YouTube in real time. So that's a really good way of doing it. Um, yeah, and then um, I've got a video that says how to market and sell puppies. Um, I'd go look at that. It gives you some ideas about things that you should and shouldn't be doing. It'll help you out. And I think the thing to remember here is you've got to put yourself in the shoes of the person who's buying a dog from you. They're scared that it's going to be a scam. So you've got to get past that by doing things like Facebook and answering all their questions and being FaceTime, prompt. You mean. Yeah, FaceTime or that. And reply to you. Thank you. Um, and then, you know, don't just take a static picture. If you can, you know, take a number of pictures. The YouTube videos is great because you can narrate it. You can see the dogs running around. You can see how they their gait is how they interact with other puppies. Them. Yeah, exactly. So it's great for that. And then the other thing is, is that you can take a video that you've done, you can take screenshots from that video, and it's much, much easier than trying to take a picture. It's very hard to take good pictures of dogs because they're just always doing the wrong thing. And I promise you, if Tammy and I continue to take pictures of dogs, we'd be divorced by now, right? Yes. It's it's absolutely, you know, frustrating it's, it's very well. frustrating, very frustrating. Um, so uh, I, I would say the videos is absolutely the way to go at that. That's 14 minutes. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. 
Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.